Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, call us Marla Gibbs and Regina King because it's episode 227 hey, of the JV and Benny Review. Don't you nobody. You, don't you, nobody. You, like, you like that? Yeah, I you like, like that. What Dr. Bridges? I like that. Young, young don't young, know about that? Young Regina King, you know what I'm saying? Two, young two, Regina King. Young, young Regina King. She was a teenager. Uh, and of course, Jack A. Harris on that thing, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Can't forget, yeah, you know what I'm saying? You gotta, you know what I'm saying? Make sure you understand, sign your hand, aka Uncle Elroy's mistress, yeah, buddy. You know what I'm saying? Next Friday, no, that, that wasn't her, that wasn't her. That, that was oh, no, so... my part of me, that was Kim Whitley, my yeah, apologies. that was Kim Whitley. Y'all from the second, that man, 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 if she was gonna be that, she'd have been kind of old. <laughs> Right. <laughs> she'd have been a little, she'd have been in a hot 60s, so 65, 70, you know what I'm saying? Right. Talking about being, uh, right. okay, hey, Elroy, what's up, up? Sean Sprague, what's Will up, sir? In. Will, Will what's up? In. we love Got you. Speed on the recovery, Will, you know what I'm saying? Will yeah. out there, you know what I'm saying, trying to, trying to hang with them young cats. Mm-mm-mm. Will... Will, we love you. We appreciate you tapping in basically every ep- episode and for every anybody episode, else. Man. Tap it and make sure to follow us at JB and Benny Blue on all social media. Subscribe to our YouTube, man. You know we already got the the content, the hot topics, anything that's happening in between shows. You know we got you on all our socials. Of course, follow us individually, JB. That's at seven three King JB seven three, and yours truly at Benny Blue Eyes. Of course, we're on the TikTok, same as always at JB and Benny Blue. Make sure to tap in with our friends. You're going to be seeing a lot more of. Right. Casualsports.com, KS Runners. Are you already know our our 2022 NFL Savage preview of the season is coming up just in a couple weeks. Listen, you still want this audio dope? Get that one hot dollar. Patreon.com slash JB and Benny Blue. And no. just like Sean and Will did at any point during the show, Tap please in. drop a comment or a question. Now, Doctor Bridges, please, if you could, uh, raise your T-shirt to camera view. Uh, for the for the, uh, the ah, yes, that's right, Bird yes, Gang all day. Yes. Listen, Bird pay Gang attention all to day. pay attention to our socials because we're going to be running a sale just specifically on that merch, the T-shirt, the hoodie, however you mm-hmm, want it. Mm-hmm, Dad hat, mm-hmm. we got it for you. You're yep. going to get all that information. You're going to get that directly to you through our social media channels. So we can get you right just before the regular season starts. So be on the lookout for that. Next week, because we're going to drop that promo, all the Bird Gang, all the desert is just for you. So yes, make sir. sure you are looking like Dr. Bridges and, and draped up and dripped out in your Bird Gang all day merch. Speaking of merch, speaking of uh, clothing, of course, mm. with, our, with our guys, Valley Boy Association <laughs> Clothing. Yes, Go sir. to valleyboysassociation.com and use code PODCAST22 for 20% off your order at checkout. And of course, tap in with our guy, it's timdebuy.com. Get a new pre owned or new or pre owned vehicle text review to 515 444 7003 or DM him at it's Tim to buy on Instagram. All that shit. We love our sponsors. We love all of you for watching. We appreciate you guys so much. But listen, man, that, that's a business. Dr. Bridges, how are you feeling, good sir, on this fine Wednesday evening, my friend? Oh, it's been a great day, Benny. Like, it's really been a great day. I, uh, You know what I'm saying? And, 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 of course, you know what I'm saying? And as, as my grandma used to always say, you know what I'm saying? When God is working, the devil is too, right? Ooh. So, of course, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it don't matter. You know, it don't really matter what goes on. You know what I'm saying? It was, it was a great day, right? It was a wonderful Beautiful. day. I get to do what I love to do. You know what I'm saying? A podcast with my brother here. Yes, you know indeed. what I'm saying? So we all here popping off, you know what I'm saying, doing what we do best, you know what I'm saying, giving you guys that good content. But I am healthy, happy, you know what I'm saying. Uh, that's all That's all that matters, you know what I'm saying. Kids is good, you know, everybody healthy, we good to go, man. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, we're, we're healthy, happy, and hi- highly favored on this side, the west side. And uh, listen, man, we got we got some stuff to get into. We're, we're, I know, for viewers, I know, JB and I talk about it in our pen and production meeting, and you know we talk about it a little bit down here. We're right in that spot where it's like, we can just reach out and taste it. It just ain't nothing going oh, on right no, now. It's here. Like it's shout here, out, but it's not. Shout out, shout out to the WNBA. Y'all trying to hold us down. I get it. You know what I'm saying? MLS soccer just started back up. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and I'm actually being, I'm actually getting more and more into soccer. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, okay. it's, it's starting to grow on me a little bit more. So I'm starting to dig a little bit into that 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 little hole and, and check out soccer, man, and get more interested in that. Uh, but other than that, yeah, football is right around the corner at this point. We're going to the second preseason game of the, uh, of, of the preseason right. coming up, and we only got three preseason games this year, right? Mm-hmm. So three preseason That's games. To be made. Yes, sir. And then next thing you know, 
cuts to be made. They already had one cut. You know, after this game, they're going to have more cuts. Uh, man, that season will be upon our ass before you know it. Like, literally, it'll be game one. Mm-hmm. And we'll have the Sundays and the Thursdays and the Mondays cracking. This is going to be beautiful, baby. Yep, September 11th is going down. So, you know, we're going to be getting into all that before the, the season starts. So, be sure to tap in with all that. And as always, if you ever miss an episode, you can always run this back on YouTube. We got it for you in full. And listen, man, sponsor, sponsorship questions, hate mail. You want to be a guest on our show as well. Again, get at us. Serious inquiries only. JB yes. and Benny Blue Review at gmail.com. All right. Listen, folks, we ain't going to hold you up any longer. We got to get into some goddamn football talk. All right. So we're going to get into it now with some goddamn training camp news, baby. All right. So I uh, got to start with the BG, of course. Or gang, they win the uh, first preseason game. I even saw Kyler uh, on the headset potentially calling plays. Mm. A uh, bright spot was second-year DB Jace Whitaker getting seven solo tackles. He's trying yes. to earn a spot on the mm-hmm. fifty-three man. But hey, man, you're the you're the de- you're the de facto GM of the Burr Gang around here. What did you see from some of the depth from the BG? Because as as we know, starters probably going to get going to get a series or two, and then they're right. out. So what did you see from the depth, and who did you like, and what, what did you want to see? more of or better of from you know from the second and third stringers in the bg and guys trying to make the squad quite honestly we got, we got some really good problems right now right and that's a good thing to have in, in the preseason we got some good problems right uh our defensive backfield is one of my major concerns right uh the young boys basically play well of course you know what i'm saying what could do this thing mm-hmm. uh but as far as our receiving core right we are thick at receiver right uh this kid dorch is just constantly making plays constantly making plays constantly making plays he keeps showing up at practice showing up day to day uh i do believe he's going to make our roster man you know saying of course with andy isabella being uh i think it's the fourth year guy at this point uh really hadn't made that splash that we thought he was going to make and of course we've got a rondell moore you know what i'm saying so those dorch and rondell moore it's those two body type fast guys that can really take the top off of it uh so uh, and then, of course, the, my main concern, honestly, was our defensive line, to be completely honest with you, right? Uh, and then, of course, our linebacking core. So our defense as a whole was just kind of giving me, you know, I, I was really wondering, you know, saying how we were going to come back and be this year. Of course, Chandler leaving us. Uh, of course, what well, we got the JYD, you know what I'm saying? We got Golden, you know what I'm saying? We still got Kennard, you know what I'm saying? We still got, uh, we got JJ back healthy, you know what I'm saying? Um 52, I can't say his last name, and I don't even want to attempt to say his last name. Uh, but this kid is <laughs> gonna be you. good for us, right? He's gonna be he's gonna be good for us. He's gonna be a hell of a backup. Uh Zavin Collins, I wish you would quit football. Oh I, w- I wish you'd quit. Jeez. I wish you I wish you'd quit. quit I, I've, I've said he's he's just not a good football player, Benny. We we duffed on that one, bro. Like we, we really, we really whiffed on that one, you know what I'm saying? As far as linebacker go. We should I don't really think we should let Hicks go. And if we did, in letting Hicks go, we should have really made a play for Bobby Wagner, which I really think that was kind of a lost cause because he wanted to play in L.A. anyway. Yeah. Um, but it's like, I mean, we, it was so many veteran linebackers out there that we could have picked up because we need them, right? We need, And we still probably might, right, after watching, you know what I'm saying, like some, some highlights of this kid play. And I'm like, and I, and I watched the first game for the most part. I'm like, ill, right? Like, this dude is just bad. Even Ron Wolfley was giving him hell about not using his hands, taking on blocks. And that's not going to win for us, right? So... Defensive line wise, I was very impressed. Right, I was very impressed. We got some depth on that defensive line. All right, we got some kids to go play some good ball. Uh, and our offensive line showed up too. Right, so some of the young, some of the young kids we got late, late, late that were that had high rate, high round projections showed up. The kid from Virginia Tech played really good ball at left guard. Right, uh, so and then of course the quarterback. How can I forget him? Right, you know what I'm saying the kid. Larry, about to bring up Chase McSorley. Oh, Chase McSorley, man, this kid looked great. Right. But then you got the kid who was our backup last year. You know what I'm saying? He came in shining. Again, we got good problems, man. But what I really liked was the simplicity of the play calling. I loved it, right? I loved it. Run the ball and you're getting it in, in, in plus five, right? In, in the minus five. You know what I'm saying? The red zone, five yards in, if you will, right? Run the ball, right? You know what I'm saying? Uh, you took your shots here. Yeah, we took some shots down the field, but not many, right? Um, throwing the ball underneath. Throwing the ball in the middle. You know what I'm saying? Play caller was really nice, right? And I think that's going to be the difference between winning and losing this year is how well are, are our players going to be called? How well is little man going to do? Is he going to use those escape routes? Is he going to get those three or four yards to get first down to keep drives going? Uh, or are we going to be just throwing moon balls all day and trying to hit home runs, right? Because if we do that, Goddamn moon balls. We're, we're not, we're not going to be it, right? You know what I'm saying? So with all the talent we got, you know, you want hop being out for those four games or whatever he's out for, it don't really matter. 
right? We got hella talent, you know what I'm saying? So running backs, receivers, tight ends, anything, any position you can check, we are loaded at that position on offense. Around defense, we got guys that can bring depth to the table, you know what I'm saying? When you got guys that can fill in, you know what I'm saying, and there's no letdown as far as, like, personnel, uh, talent-wise, yeah, we're going to be okay. So our defensive backfield, I think, is going to hold up pretty well. Our defensive line going to be pretty good. I'm still – the linebacker position is still kind of that that iffy spot. Now, so you know they beat beat the Bengals thirty six twenty three. Um, you know they're 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 taking on the Ravens at home here on the twenty first. Um, now, so look, it starts at ninety. I think what what was the, what was the, like it was what five cuts that had to be made by I think was it like Tuesday or like yesterday or something yeah. like that. Am I right mm-hmm. yeah. in that? So what it so it will drop down. So it's going to drop down to what after game two seventy five. Yeah, it's, it's, gonna, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a real that, that's the biggest cut after game two, especially at this point because it's only three preseason games. Uh, yeah. That's got to be the largest cut at that point, right? So um, after 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 the second preseason game, they're cutting down to shit. I mean, if they're eighty five right now, they're gonna cut down to at least seventy five or under, right? So mm. you know, what I'm saying it's uh, they're gonna they're gonna need they're gonna need a few bodies, you know, what I'm saying to play their preseason game. But that's yeah. that that's basically just gonna be our straight up backups. That's gonna be your twos, right? And possibly threes at that point. You know, what I'm saying. Uh, Right this, by week three, yeah. Right, yeah. So this this game right here, I'm looking forward to seeing. You know, what I'm saying, little man play a little bit, uh, Colt play a little bit. I'm looking to I'm looking to see a little bit more of our actual starters play uh, right. for at least a quarter, right? For at least getting there and burn burn it up for at least a quarter, uh, get their feet wet, and of course, you know, what I'm saying as we spoke about when this whole three preseason thing came about, the first game is basically going to be. You know what I'm saying? Like the, the the second or third preseason game, like for a regular preseason, right? For a four game preseason. Cause right. Now, but four game preseason, right? That third preseason game was when all the starters played, some of them played shit, three quarters, right? Uh, so basically that fourth preseason game is gonna be like that I mean the first regular season game is gonna be like the old third preseason game <laughs> where it's gonna be a little sloppy in the beginning, right? But I mean this is the way they wanted it, so hey, it's the way they got it. So I'm excited about it, man. Yeah, man, and look, it's it's even it's even more emphasis for guys who are on the bubble, um, dudes who, like you said, who might be in that position where they're coming up at the end of the rookie contract, mm-hmm. and it's iffy if they're going to get an extension or they're going to need a right. fresh start. They need to perform from week right. one of the preseason because they're they're mm-hmm. even getting less opportunity in reps with the way things go with OTAs and mini camps and training right. camp, right. where they really like that first preseason game is going to be all on the fringe guys, practice squad guys. Like mm-hmm. if you really want to be in the 53, you got to stake your claim in preseason week one now more than ever. So right. some of those guys you mentioned, they got to, you know, they got to shape up or ship out. And uh, as, as there, as you're seeing on some of the previews, uh, the BG is actually going to be the in season version of HBO's hard knocks. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, who's the current version. Hey. Ooh. Dr. Blue. Them kitties. They dropped the first two episodes. And uh, I got to tell you, man, I mean, I'm loving it. I'm loving the culture that they're building. I'm loving getting to know the the position coaches, the coordinators. Obviously, now we're getting into, you know, like Hard Knocks does every year. They always key in on a few guys that are like mm-hmm. on the bubble, see if they're going to make the team or make or right, not right. make the team. Right. Obviously, I'm my personal bias. But Dr. Bridges, just you being just a fan in general, what are your, what are your thoughts thus far of what we've seen from uh, – from Hard Knocks, particularly for for my my kitties, I'm just excited. I, I ain't even seen one episode of Hard Knocks yet, uh, but I, but I'm just excited about you know seeing y'all play anyway this year. Well, I said it in the last year. I said, man, y'all gonna be trouble next year, right? So uh, this is the culture. You know, what I'm saying like you said, you keep saying the culture. You know, what I'm saying the culture is changing, right? Uh, going from a oh we're gonna lose every game culture, or yeah we might win this game culture, to saying hey you better watch your ass. You know, what I'm saying. First of all, again, I tell you all the time, you have the the greatest home field advantage ever, right? And I know a lot of people are like, what? Damn, don't nobody go to Detroit games. Thank exactly. you for vacation, baby. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Because don't nobody want to fucking go play football in Detroit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, Detroit games, you're just like, ah, we got to go to Detroit to play? Ew, right? So, and again, by the time next thing you know, you know what I'm saying? You're down by two touchdowns. You know what I'm saying? You're fighting for your life, right? So, and again, talent-wise, coaching, you know what I'm saying? You guys, I mean, y'all got, got some winners, man. Y'all got some winners, and I'm excited for real. I, I can't wait to see you know what I'm saying the kiddies play ball. You know what I'm saying, and and honestly, I think y'all gonna raise hell in the north, man. <laughs> right? People people think I'm crazy when I say it. I think y'all gonna raise pure hell in the north, right? Because when we look at who y'all got, Green Bay. I mean, 
Aaron Rodgers on TV right now talking about how his, his young receivers don't want to catch the ball. And, oh, we're covering that next. And, and, yep. and then, you know, saying and the Vikings is like, what's going on in Minnesota right Kirk, now? Yeah, De- Kirk Cousins has <laughs> COVID for the 10th time. Right. It's like, yeah, like I'm saying, like, what's Dang. going on in Minnesota right now? Like, you got to stay out of the Mall of America, Kurt. You know what I'm saying? Like, Jesus Christ. You know what I'm saying? You can't be over there. You he know what I'm saying? He went to Cinnabon and got COVID for this. All right. You can't, time. you can't be out there shopping. You know what I'm saying? Shopping at Tiffany's for the wife. You know what I'm saying? Every time we get COVID, bro. Like, relax. I sit your ass down somewhere. Mr. But, Mr. You like that COVID. Right. You like you like Jesus. that germ. Yeah, you like that germ. That's basically what it is. And in the Bears, I mean, okay. I mean, I mean yeah. whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay. Who knows at this yeah, point? Yeah, basically. But. Toss up, right? Coin toss. Toss up. We're going to see what it do, though. You know what I'm saying? But I know that the Lions go make some noise, right? I, I'm putting money on that. Well, I guess the moral of the story, reviewers, is I got to share the HBO Max password with my guy so we can, he can catch up with the episodes because it, it is a pretty entertaining and look i mean even even just watching their camp from an objective point of view there's definitely certain deficiency in talent but i right off the bat i think aiden hutchinson's gonna have a good rookie year yep. is a dude gonna be amazing tj watt level player it it really remains to be seen i mean he we'll definitely see, has right? a motor but he's got some physical lack of some physical gifts that he's got to make up for so we'll see how you know how that how that plays out but they the culture's there listen dan campbell calls plays sometimes like he's playing madden and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't but they'll be they'll be like you said with that with the with the winning culture they'll be damned if they're gonna let the foot off the gas just because they're down 14 that's right you know what i'm saying they're gonna hey, keep going look you can you, what, what I, I did hear him say this right you can have one butt cheek and three toes mm-hmm. i'm still gonna whoop your ass that that look hey that's that if you got that attitude you're gonna win more games than you lose trust me when right. i say that right right and we talked about it last week. We you know we had money making witch on. We had you know the, the Vegas has them as the over under at six and a half, and I, I I already put in my bet. I'm taking them over six and a half. Hey, look, I'm, I'm so so. My thing is that I'm going I'm going like low key going put in a, like a little low key bet for them to win the North, bro. Like for real, yeah, the return on that's actually pretty yeah. decent. I'm gonna put yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's probably like plus twelve, plus thirteen, really. You know what I'm saying? So. Hey, I'm put fifty, sh- put fifty on it. You might, you know, you might come up with, you know, five. Feel me, feel me. Nope. You know what I'm saying? Shit, nope. you gonna come up a little more than that. You know what I'm saying? You put a five on that thing, you gonna come up a little bit more than that. So I'm, I'm, I do that. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I do all that. You know what I'm saying? Like right before the season starts, kind of. You know what I'm saying? Going. You know, we got this big beautiful thing getting put up. The MGM is putting this big beautiful thing up right by our stadium. You know what I'm saying? Sports book. It's gorgeous, man. I'm telling you, man. You know what I'm saying? It's beautiful out here in the West. Well, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be seeing it soon enough. But yes, keeping, it, keeping it in the NFC North, as you alluded to. Oh, Mr. Ayahuasca, Aaron Rodgers. Jesus Christ. Expressed his frustration with his young receivers and their growing pains. Will the Packers regret not maintaining a more veteran receiver room? And not, I'm not even just talking about uh, Devontae Adams. I mean, it's all youngins in there. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. They, I mean, that you know, what, the one thing about it, we say it all the time. When you got 12 behind center, you got a chance to win the game, right? But what happens if 12 fuck around and get hurt, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, what if? You know what I'm saying? Love is not the guy. I'm sorry. He's not the guy, all right? Yeah, he's just not good. He's not the guy. He didn't look good his first preseason game. He looked, shit, low-key trash, to be honest, right? So he's not the guy, all right? So 12 got to be the guy, but at the same time, his receivers got to help him out. So, uh, yeah, it might come back and bite him in the ass, to be honest. I mean, I know they got a decent run game. The offensive line is healthy at this point, right? So I mean, we'll see, but... Them young receivers, they're going to catch hell in the first few weeks. You know what I'm saying? Straight up, they're going to catch hell. Yeah, I mean, look, they got they got Christian Watson, the kid from you know North Dakota State, a.k.a. Carson Wentz University. They got uh, Aquemia St. Brown, a.k.a. the mm-hmm. brother of Amon Ra St. Brown. Right, yeah, um, St. Brown boys. Right. By the way, here's another reason to watch Hard Knocks. Did you know that the uh, the pops of the St. Brown brothers mm-hmm. yeah. was a two-time Mr. Universe yeah. power lifter? Mm-hmm. So he, he still has, trains them. He, he has his own, um, you know what I'm saying, like his own supplement line. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. So he, yeah. he he was in uh, he was in Hard Knocks as well. So I mean, they got some talent, but like, I mean, it's they're all they're almost paying for the mistakes of not drafting and developing receivers three four years ago right to pair with rogers trajectory now and they get, right. they get the jordan love pick his his rookie deal is almost up and like after after this year it's going to be what like a like a like a team option or like do they have to extend them I hey benny I, i'm being honest when i say this I was, I was watching a little bit of the game and i was watching with my folks and i'm like yo i honestly didn't know who this dude was i forgot what he looked like right right 
I forgot what he looked like. I saw him and I'm like, who the hell is this dude? Oh, that's love. Damn, Damn. this dude's still around. That they took and his, his, his time's almost running out. They're either going to pay him or flip him. So I don't know. Yeah. Man. Like you uh, said, yeah. Madras goes down. That is like a fundamentally different team. Yes, sir. But you know, you already know ayahuasca, random tattoos, whatever he's got going on. When he when he can when he can slang it, especially in the in the two minute drill, nobody's safe. So right, a lot of doubt. You know, but you know, hey, he was say, saying the receivers are dropping. We're, we're dropping balls and running bad routes. So it's a growing pains. Rodgers, you've been around long enough to know right. you're going to have to beat sure. them to like Rod- five, Rod- six, seven, eight. Right. Rodgers like, Dan- Rodgers like Danny Glover and motherfucking uh, lead the weapon at this point. I'm too old for this shit. Too old for this shit. <laughs> Getting too old for this shit, right? And he ain't lying. So we'll see what happens with the old pack going into the season. All right. Keeping it in the quarterback battles. Ooh, we got a hot one with the Steelers. It's Kenny Pickett and Risky Mitchell Trubisky. Risky, um, Kenny Trubisky. Pickett playing decent start now. Uh, but is Mason Rudolph, he might be the odd man out. They might have to try to flip him for some assets for, for a needy team. But what do you think about the battle? Who do you think is ultimately going to get a starting job? Again, good problem to have, right? Uh, I'm going with Trubisky because of his experience. I don't think they're ready to put uh, Kenny Pickett out there yet to be the man-man. Uh, they got some really good pieces uh, receiver-wise. You know, that young kid from Georgia is going to be crazy. The kid they had last year, they just paid, right? Uh, they, got, they, got, they got everything they need. As far as offensive weapons, right? That offensive line probably, you know, it needs to get stronger, it needs to get better. But I think they're going to help that offensive line out by running the ball with Najee. You know what I'm saying? They're going to make sure that he gets his touches. They're probably going to run the ball or run the offense through Najee, kind of like a, um, uh, a what's my guy's name, man? I ain't just do we ain't called his name in so long because he ain't been in the NFL in like three years, right? Uh, but the the running back uh, Gurley, right? Right. With, when he was with the Rams, it's going to be like a girly situation. Like the whole offense is going to run through Najee, right? Right. Almost so, like a golf, like a golf girl. Right. Right. Thing. Without a yeah, thing. Yeah. Without a difference. Without without a doubt. So uh, I can see that. And of course, their defense is already amped up and ramped up. Uh, but I don't see Kenny Pickett getting the start over Mitch Trubisky right now because Mitch Trubisky is just a veteran quarterback. You know, what I'm saying he has he he he's has low mileage, right? And again, you know, he he's the type of cat that he'll he won't lose games for you. Well, not in that offense, he won't. Right. <laughs> in Matt right. Nagy's offense, anybody lose games for you. You know what I'm saying? Hell, Joe right. Montana would lose games for you in Matt Nagy's offense. Right. right? So, yeah, I got Trubisky getting a nod. Um, uh, Trubisky, I think I think eventually, you know what I'm saying, even if Trubisky has success, you know, they, they drafted Kenny Pickett to be their guy. Yeah. Uh, so, Trubisky can, man, he can take him to the playoffs with the Super Bowl this year. Next year, Kenny Pickett will be starting, right? Without a doubt. And if Trubisky goes down, the God forbid, you know what I'm saying, injury, He'll right. go down. Kenny Pickett will be in the guy uh, that that takes that takes the reins, and at that point, he probably you know Trubisky will never give him back. But those are situations right now. I think that they're looking. You know, as far as Mike Tomlin goes, you know, he's one of the greatest coaches ever lived. You know, what I'm saying so. He's you know they coach. That's one thing that they do. And the one thing he said on the Pivot podcast is that I I run to coaching as opposed to running from it. And that's what my staff is. So they're going to coach and develop. And I think Mr. Trubisky is going. We're going to see a different Mr. Trubisky. We're going to see their Pro Bowl year, Mr. Trubisky. Uh, and Kenny Pickett's going to have an opportunity to sit back and learn and the luxury, the luxury of sitting back and learning and not having right. to jump in that fire. Right, exactly. I think that's how it plays out. I think Mitch gets the start. If it's a situation where Mitch Mitch is rolling and they're in contention in the division and in the conference, they're going to stay with him and, and let, you know, Kenny learn and, you know, cl- you know, hold the clipboard and be on ice a little bit. Um but it could be a situation where if they're kind of eh, by the time they get to the bye week, maybe Kenny, you know, Kenny is ready to go. And the thing, the thing with, uh, you know, old, old Mason Rudolph is that even though he's best known as, you know, getting rocked by goddamn Miles Garrett, he might, he might be, he might be in a situation where he's been like, sort of like he's, he's been in there as a starter. He's been there for a minute. So it's either going to be a situation where they're going to make him, they're going to make him the backup and just put Kenny on ice completely or maybe they get into the season and a team is, gets really desperate and they need some depth in the room, and then mm-hmm. they end up, they end up flipping him before the trade deadline. So that right, that right. could be the thing. And to your point about you know Mitch, I mean you know Matt Nagy he's, he's calling plays at Joe Montana. Joe Montana's gonna be hold, holding his, his ear his ear heads like did I did I hear what I just hear? So he's, <laughs> what he's saying, he's saying four verticals every play. What the what? Fuck? So <laughs> yeah, like like Trubisky like they went to the playoffs with Trubisky like right. he's actually like is is he is he the savior? Absolutely not. But he's no. uh, he's better than what his Chicago experience gave him credit for. So right. he'll be a good bridge before they get Kenny really where they need to go. And like you said. 
Mikey T, one of the best in the business ever, is going to have them ready regardless. Even if there's deficiencies in talent, they're still going to be in the mix. They're still going to have a 500 to, to a winning record regardless. So it's definitely interesting to see how it plays out. All right. Keep pounding your former employer, mm. the QB battle in, in Carolina. It's old Baker and then Sam Darnold, but they still have PJ Walker. And of course they drafted Matt Corral. So it's a four man quarterback room. So do you think they're ultimately going to give the reins to Baker and then try to flip Darnold just given that room or what, what, what is your opinion on what you think is going to happen and maybe should happen? Well, I, I think that as soon as Baker put his name on the dotted line, it was his offense, right? Uh, Baker Mayfield is an upgraded Sam Darnold. Is what it is, right? Uh, and that's not saying much. But, like, Baker Mayfield gives him a better chance to win than Sam Darnold does, to be honest. Sam Darnold has had his opportunities. He's had his time, right? He's had his opportunities. He's had his chances, right? Uh, he's been mediocre at best, you know what I'm saying? Again, he's had chances to make plays and do things and show his worth. He hasn't done it. Baker Mayfield is going to take the reins. And yeah, I do think there's some kind of way they're going to get Darnold out of there. They're going to get a little money from him. They're going to shop him. You know what I'm saying? Get a couple picks on and so forth to, for a team that needs a guy to uh, take over and, and, and play ball uh, or, or as a strong backup because they don't have one. So I can see that happening. Uh, P.J. Walker, uh, he's an asset to always have. And Matt Carell's is not ready to play yet. Uh, but P.J. Walker is a, a valuable asset to have because he's so mobile. So you can do a lot of different right. things with him at, quarter, at quarterback. And he showed that last year uh, when he got in the groove, right? So uh, other than that, man, uh, yeah, Baker Mayfield, that's his offense. Uh, Carolina, I'm just going to put a little bug in your ear. You know what I'm saying? I might be out there for that all for that uh, alumni game. Who knows? Uh, hey, Carolina, why don't you, uh, why don't you, uh, you know, let let my man slide his resume across the table. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, can, mm. you, can, you might be able to get in there and help you out. You know, hey, you know, that's what I mean, I'm saying. Hey, you know, I, you know, I, I love, love, love the city of Charlotte. You know what I'm saying? So we never know. You know, never know. <laughs> but I'm with you. I mean, I think it's one of those situations where PJ Walker is an excellent backup and can actually do something for you in in a jam when you need him to start. I mean, he's proven that he can be a playmaker. Matt Corral definitely not on the same, I think, readiness level as Kenny Pickett, where it's like you definitely got to let him be on ice a little bit. Right, he's yeah. a talented, well, he's said, a talented yeah. kid, of but course, he's not yeah. as pro he's ready. Not, he's just not ready to play yet. It's right, Pickett, yeah. and then, and then Bate, like you said, as soon as that ink dried, Baker, you know, Baker was already getting getting the progressive crew out there to shoot the new moving into the new stadium commercial. <laughs> right. <campaign>. So he go ahead, he go ahead, he go ahead, virtual reality fucking Panther running around you know what I'm saying right, right. <laughs> helping it with a tape measure interior decorating and shit so da- so Sam Darnold unfortunately with the way his careers went he's not going to stand for trying to be in the mix with two other quarterbacks in addition to Baker so mm-hmm. I think it's going to be a similar situation to um Mason Rudolph where they're going to get mm-hmm. into the season they're probably not going to move him before the season to get a better deal ultimately play the GM card right, of course you know yeah, right. you know, get somebody poker. get somebody in desperation of course somebody yeah. goes down oh mm-hmm. Drew Locke goes down Geno Smith goes down then maybe you see Sam Darnold getting flipped to the, to the Seahawks for like a fifth rounder or something mm-hmm. like that you know what I mean right. so I, right, I definitely right. see that sort of thing happening well look reviewers that is some goddamn NFL training camp headlines but before we get into our next segment Let's get into our fine sponsors again. Please make sure to tap in with our guys, Valley Boys Association Clothing. Go get them. Valleyboysassociation.com. Use code. Shout out to Zach and Cody. do the sweet life and get 20% off your order at checkout. And, of course, tap with our guy. It's timtobuy.com. Get your new or pre-owned vehicle now. Text REVIEW. That's REVIEW to 515-444-7003 or DM him. At it's Tim to buy on Instagram, and he will hook you up no matter where you at in the country. He's the best in the business, and for us, of course, make sure to follow us at JB and Benny Blue for all your social media needs. If you still want this in audio form, one dollar a month for the podcast and exclusive content. Patreon. One damn dollar. Look, stop getting scammed out there. Bye. Right. The the OnlyFans chicks. You know what I'm saying? They ain't showing you nothing but their lace underwear. You know what I'm saying? Use that hot dollar to get educated on some of this fire ass sports and entertainment that we give, right? Mm-hmm. I couldn't have said it better myself. Stop, stop getting the scam for a picture of her pinky toe, goddamn. Right, you, you asked for the whole there. foot, the whole foot. So damn it, you you get you get you get the oh, whole foot, foot the in podcast form. All right. So look, man, there, there's been other things happening in the wild world of sports, and you know we got to talk about it here with a little bit of some review reaction news baby that's right and we got to take it of course to the big 
breaking news. The Woj bomb. That's right. LeBron James signs a two-year, ninety-seven, ooh, wee, point one million dollar extension, including a player option in twenty-four, twenty-five. Playing, <laughs> playing with Bronny and Bryce? Question mark with the Lakers. Uh, Jimmy, Versace, I mean, the bag part's the bag part. The man deserves it. But as far as the salary cap and the plans for the Lakers and helping LeBron get a championship team around him, what did you think about this extension at this time? Well, I mean, if you want to keep your team together, you want to build a foundation, you got to keep your centerpiece, right? So LeBron is definitely the centerpiece. There's no other way around that. Uh, Anthony Davis, you know what I'm saying, is, you know, there's been a lot of conversation about whether they want to keep him or not. And he, is he the guy, you know what I'm saying, that to, to pair with Bron and to, to win a championship, and uh, we never know. But yeah, they had to keep. They had to get their centerpiece. They had to get their their support beam, if you will, uh, of the house that they're trying to build. He is the main support beam. So yeah, they shot him a little dough. You know what I'm saying? Which I mean, basketball. A little dough. Goddamn. Well, I mean, it depends on how that luxury tax is. You know what I'm saying? Yada yada yada. Right. I mean, yo, know, this is how it goes in basketball. You know what I'm saying? You got a team. With two max contracts, right? You got two guys with max contracts, and then all the rest of the catchers role players. That's just is what it right. is, right? That's on any any team, any championship team. That's pretty much any damn basketball team in the NBA, right? So yeah, Brian go get the big dough, right? And then uh, they probably gonna pay somebody else, and they are gonna bring in a host of veterans, you know, send some young cats that can help them out, and that's gonna be that. Yeah, and I mean, look, they had the two max deals, and then the and then the motherfucking lemon of a car note from Jerry's Auto Sales and and, and Westbrook's contract. Now they got to figure out if they're going to try to, you know, I don't think ultimately a deal is going to probably come until the trade deadline. And then they also got to figure out what type of shooters, what type of role players that they right. can put around to complement LeBron and AD. I do think AD is going to have more of a resurgence. Season. I, I, I hope so, right? I I'm hope so. so I'm so sick. Of, I'm so sick of Mr. Glass. Out there, you know what I'm saying? Fucking falling and flopping and, and fucking tripping on a motherfucking a grain of uh, a little drop of sweat and fucking <laughs> being out, being, uh, being out, being out for goddamn eight, nine, ten, eleven weeks, you know what I'm saying? Because he sprained his ACL. Like, yeah. come on, man. Like, get your doughy ass in the gym, get stronger, develop some range of motion, get some better mobility, you know what I'm saying? Loosen up them tight ass hips and ankles and knees and, man, play a whole damn season. Why well, don't Jeez. shit? Yeah. And get rid of Westbrook because y'all ain't gonna win shit until y'all get rid of him. Right, right. Like, well, man. You know, no, nobody, nobody, nobody taking on that deal. So we'll see how how long and he, into the season that he goes on the team, and you know what they're gonna do to try to get back to contention because you already know they got to deal with your sons among many say, other teams. With all that being said, go Suns. All right. right there it is. Speaking of the Suns, just the NBA in general, of course, mm-hmm. you know the mm-hmm. NBA is is an, is an attention seeking league, as you know, Doctor Bridges. Sure. So, of course, in the in the mix of all the NFL headlines, they had to drop in their Christmas Day games, and this is what we got: we got Sixers and Knicks, we got Lakers and Mavericks, Bucks and Celtics, Grizzlies and Warriors. I'm looking forward to that one, and your Suns and your Nuggets. Which of these games are you most looking forward to? Are you looking forward to all of these games? On, I mean, on Christmas I mean, Day. I mean, they all going to be a motherfucker, to be honest. I mean, so right to the, the Grizzlies, Warriors, and the Suns Nuggets, you know what I'm saying? Because, whew, you know, knockdown drag out. Those are two last year playoff games, yeah. playoff series that went, you know what I'm saying, and, and that were very heated, you know what I'm saying, that went, you know what I'm saying, five-plus games. And, oh, yes, uh, Knicks and the 76ers, eh, I mean, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like, If the Knicks get Donovan Mitchell, that but will be a much well, more interesting game. Yeah, but we'll we'll see. see. Yeah, we'll see. Only time will tell. Well, right now, what we're dealing with. And then for his Lakers, Mavericks, I mean, okay. Um, Luka going to do his thing, and then LeBron going to do his thing, and then we'll see. It depends on who's fucking healthy, too. Like, you know what I'm saying? Let's be right. honest, right? Who's healthy? Because we've all, you know, the last couple of years, we've seen these Christmas Day games, and shit, they stars ain't even playing, right? So right now, just off rip. Grizzlies, Warriors, Suns, Nuggets. I need that. All right. Yeah, I probably say Grizzlies, Warriors, number one, Suns, Nuggets, number two, and then Bucks, Celtics, number three. I think the other two. I think it's smart. They put them as the opening games because, yeah. like you said, we don't know what we're gonna get from you know young street clothes. He might be out by Christmas. So if he's out, the Lakers are gonna be in bad way. And then, like you said, the Sixers, Knicks. We don't. I mean, it's the Garden. It's gonna have energy, but we don't know what we're gonna get out of either of those teams, or right. well, at least the Knicks anyway. But the last three, especially the with all with all that cash money shit that they've been saying back and forth to each other from the Grizzlies and the Warriors, I'm looking forward to that one by Christmas. Yes, sir. Day. I think yes, that's, gonna be, that's gonna be a nasty, a nasty game. Good one. Draymond probably gonna get kicked out. All right, kicking somebody in the nuts like he always does. Mm, you know the dub, the WWE. 
Speaking of the ring, oh man, it's been a long time for this gentleman. Um, Deontay Wilder is coming back, and he's he's fighting Robert Hellenus on October fifteenth at Barclays Center in Brooklyn. Uh, Hellenus, I've seen him on some like PBC fights. He's a solid fighter. I think his record is like thirty-one and three. Is he like a top five, top tier guy? No, but a good, I think, solid opponent. And getting off, obviously, the ring rust and what he, you know, all the stuff that happened after the Tyson Fury fight. But yes. JB, your reaction just to, not only to Deontay Wild, Wilder coming back, but also, you know, 36 years old. What do you think is, you know, ultimately kind of the game plan for him at this point? Well, I pray that he changes camp, right? That, Which that's he did a, a little bit. Okay, well, from one that, fight that, to another, but well, maybe he's going to do it again. That needs to happen big time because Deontay Wilder needs to learn how to box, right? We know he's a fighter, but Deontay Wilder has no head movement, right? You know what I'm saying? He won't stand toe-to-toe with people like, I mean, with, you know, Tyson Fury just whooped his ass because Tyson Fury is a more skilled boxer than him, right? That's just what it was, you know what I'm saying? Of course, he came out wearing, you know what I'm saying, fucking uh, Megatron's, you know what I'm saying, armor. 80 pounds, you know right? Yeah. <laughs> so, he's like Ultimus Prime when he had the trailer on him, you know what I'm saying? He got all kind of shit just hanging off of him, you know what I'm saying? Then he get in the ring and he's fucking dehydrated and all fucked up. Okay, you got your ass whooped for it, too. So change your camp right learn how to box learn how to use that jab the long ass arms you got right the long ass powerful arms you got still he has power in them but he needs somebody in his ear that's going to teach him how to box like he should have got got atlas you know say so he should have just got atlas to come to his camp and, and, and work i mean atlas was man you just imagine what teddy atlas would do to him right you just imagine what teddy atlas would do to him right this man is big strong powerful if you teach him how to move a little bit right and how to work behind his jab, man, come on. It, it, it ain't right. many people that's going to be able to beat him, right? Right. So I think it'll be a good fight for him to come back, you know what I'm saying, and get some confidence, get a win. Like you said, shake off that, you know, that, that tar and feather, you know what I'm saying, that he got from getting his ass beat down, you know what I'm saying, by Tyson Ooh, Fury. Really? You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it's, it's going to be entertaining to watch. It's going to be good to see Deontay back in the ring, right, uh, to this day. You know what I'm saying? We still been wanting to see our guy get in there and get it cracking. So, again, my advice to Deontay Wilder, well, change your camp, bro. You know what I'm saying? That, so, and, 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 and then people, I know some people going to be out there like, oh, man, that's messed up. You know what I'm saying? Them is folks, these people, look, man, this is business, right? This is business. Straight up. I don't know how many football players have started with a trainer and had to get another trainer because this trainer made them better. You know what I'm saying? So you got to change your camp. If shit ain't working, you got to change it to make yourself, to benefit yourself, you know what I'm saying, to help yourself. Right. So I hope that he did that because it's very quiet out of his camp right now. We don't really know what's going on. Uh, when is that fight? When is that fight? October 15th. Yeah. Right. I, and, I, of course, I'm on Twitter all the time, and I ain't really seen nothing coming out of Deontay Wilder's camp. I ain't seen nothing about, you know, since preparation, none of that. So hopefully he's being secretive and he did change that camp up, you know what I'm saying, and we see – a different boxing, sticking and moving Deontay Water, you know what I'm saying, that can go the distance because his, his conditioning, to be honest, has been an issue as well, right? Mm-hmm. His conditioning has been an issue. Like, what like what are you doing? You get later rounds and you, you huffing and puffing, right? But that comes from you throwing big shots as opposed to moving, again, working behind a jab, you know what I'm saying, head movement, being busy, being jittery, so on and so forth. So I'm excited to watch the fight. I just pray, man, that he's he's made that move. Yeah, I'm excited to watch it too. And to be honest, I think he can beat Robert with like how he used to fight. But like like you said, therein lies the problem. He was running through cats that he was just athletically better than. But mm-hmm. once he got to like he even had problems with Luis Luis Ortiz. Right. And then by the time he got to like a skilled boxer as a heavyweight, he really he didn't really know what to do once Tyson kind of figured him out. Right. So do I think he can beat Robert and beat him convincingly, po- possibly knock him out, depending on how much the gap is affecting him? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. But I would hope that he fights him, maybe even fights Andy Ruiz. I was Andy about to say, we, we need an Andy Ruiz fight. That, that's got to be a money fight. fight. That would be right. a big that's money fight. That's got to be his next fight, because Andy Ruiz yeah. is about to fight somebody right now. He's about to fight Luis right. Ortiz. So okay, that's, yeah, a big, that's, a big, he, that's a big step up for Andy, Andy Ruiz. Andy, Andy looks really good, too, because like, right. I've been watching him. You know, so I follow a lot of boxing uh, uh, boxing pages on Instagram, so on and so forth. So I've been seeing Andrew Ruiz, you know what I'm saying? He looks good, you know what I'm saying? Got a lot yeah. of that shrub off of him. 
his condition looks like he's pretty good. So I'm excited to watch him fight again. You know, so I think that fight's coming up in September for something like that. Yeah, something like that. So I, I mean, if you got if Andy Ruiz somehow beats uh, Luis Ortiz, you know, who's getting older himself, that would be not only a good matchup, but I think that'd be a that would be like a good like money making fight, especially oh, if, yeah. you know, like the, the the Latino Hispanic fan base yeah, coming out. Yeah. They do that in Dallas or something like that. That's gonna be crazy. Yes, and sir. then. If Deontay wins like two fights in a row, I would love. To, I don't know if I. I don't know that I want to see him fight Tyson Fury again because they've done hey, it three times. Joshua, but I, I would love to see him fight finally fight Anthony Joshua because I do he think he could Joshua. beat Anthony Joshua. I do uh-huh. think he could beat him. Right, so, Joshua, yeah. But either way it goes, Deontay. You know we're fans of you here at the what review. We, we want to see you get back to your winning ways. So let, let's let's start it on October fifteenth. All right, so keep keeping a move from there, taking it to the wide world of college foosball. JB, this is an interesting thing that kind of came came across the timeline that I had to bookmark. So six year LSU QB Miles Brennan has retired from football, but he got a bunch of NIL deals and he is keeping all the dough because it is not based on performance. It's just based on, of course, the likeness. And this is an interesting story because this is kind of the first time I've really heard about this. Now, he's had an interesting journey. He almost transferred when Brian Kelly got there and mm-hmm. have, you know losing his spot and getting his spot and all this stuff. I mean, six-year dude, that's a super, super senior. Yeah. So what are your thoughts about him Him, you know, hanging it up and also just kind of taking advantage of the NIL and, and walking away with some bread? That's what it's for, right? That's what it's made for, right? Because these kids, and they'll guarantee you going to the NFL, right? Yep. So this is one of the reasons why the whole NIL thing came about, right? That they that the NCAA approved it because like, you have these cats that have put forth these wonderful careers on college football fields, right? On these college TVs, you know what I'm saying? That you're watching these kids play in these big bowl games so on and so forth. And then all of a sudden, they don't really get the, the opportunity to be what they need to be NFL-wise, right? Yeah, so... And again, you're selling their jerseys. You know what I'm saying? You're using them to, you know, for fucking Ma and Pa's goddamn coffee shop commercials. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? yeah, raising canes and get a couple other. Yeah, guys. but that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, like someone, someone, such and such is fucking car dealership. You know what I'm saying? In Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so, yeah, whatever little coin you getting from that shit. If you know, look, hey, I'm not finna do this whole football thing no more. Let me go take my little bread, slide out with this career with this with this degree I got. Get into the real world, man. You know what I'm saying? But now you got a little cushion behind it. So good for him, man. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, man. It's, it's an interesting story. And you, and you may see more players, like you said, who, you know, might be kind of the fringes and you just, you just don't want to play anymore. Get your NIL bread because you might walk away with a couple M's and be able to flip that into mm-hmm. a business and investments and all that yeah, sir. stuff. A whole lot of stuff going on. Speaking you can just of- go. Again, just go into what you what you went to school for, and then you can live a right. nice, comfortable life. You know, right? The 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 odd the odd irony of the actual student athlete part of the whole the whole mix that they've been talking about this whole time. And there it is. And finally, JB talking about bringing back likeness. I can't believe I'm saying this, but uh, it looks like NCAA football is coming back. In pardon the error, it's coming back in July of 2023. NCAA. 2024 and it's expected to be on the next gen consoles so Mm. as a classic ass franchise as it is um just hearing that it's coming back and obviously it's going to be different now because now you can include all the names and the likenesses Mm. and all Mm -hmm. that stuff and you're already hearing about some of the the things that they're going to do to make the gaming experience even more realistic what is your thoughts about the 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 ncaa franchise finally coming back i love it right i used to love ncaa man it was it was great it was always dope right uh, so awesome that it's coming back. Good for them and good for them kids because, of course, you know, saying them names going to be on that game, they're going to get paid for it, right? Uh, so, you know, and, and it is what it is, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, with that being said, Benny, right? PGA, right? Tiger Woods Golf is also coming back, right? Ooh, I did not know this. I just saw it on Twitter earlier, right? You know what I'm saying? So, I saw uh, an actual wax. I saw, I saw it on a uh, Golf Digest. So you know it's real. So I saw it on the Golf Digest page that I follow on my Instagram page, right? So you know it's real. I was gonna say, that's not, that, sounds, that sounds like a toilet read. Golf Digest. T- Tiger Woods Golf, baby, coming back. You know what I'm saying? Of course, that's wow. you know PGA. You know what I'm saying? Tiger Woods gracing, and it's like the Legends cover. So you got Tiger Woods in like a cartoonist type. You know what I'm saying? Picture uh, with a lot of the legends behind. You can see there. You know what I'm saying? Their their likenesses behind him. So wow. Uh, NCAA football, PGA with the Tiger Woods gracing the cover. Hey, I'm all for it, man. You know, so we need better games. You know what I'm saying on these consoles because all this far futuristic, far out bullshit that they got going on now. It's just, it's just, it's just a lot. 
It is, and, and, and listen, if, you, if you're telling if you're telling the reviewers and me that Tiger Woods Golf is coming back, you know that means there's only one left that they got to bring back. You know what it is? NBA Jam. I mean, yeah, it's NBA Jam <laughs> amazing, but no, NBA from from, from from the think of the EA family, what's the one thing they got to they got to bring back? Boxing. Thank you. They got to bring out back kings. boxing. They got to knock. knockout. They got to bring back. boxing back. You know what I'm saying? Like ring kings. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Knockout kings. Like even you know what I'm saying? Like the um, the one that was like uh, ah damn the one that was like I don't know. It was like the one that was actually from like boxing, like a PBHC or some shit. Like, I don't know what it was, but it was. Yeah, yeah, no you know what I'm saying? Yep. Yeah, we yeah we need those boxing games back. Uh, yeah, for sure. Again, why, why not? Like, what are we doing with all the great boxes we got out right now and all these damn belts they want to motherfucking be throwing around in all these damn categories and weight classes and all this shit? Please, that'll make for a great game, right? Yeah. Make for a wonderful game. Imagine imagine career mode, right? Right. Holy shit, right? Imagine career mode. That shit would be dope as hell. Mm-mm-mm. EA, we know you watch and listen to the show. Bring it back, goddamn it. You got two out of three. Come on, man. Make it make it third time's a charm. Let's do this. Or viewers, it's been a hell of a show, 227, but you know before we get on up out of here, we got to get Dr. Bridges' last goddamn word with his patented edition of JB's We Need Us, baby. Dr. Bridges, please, if you could, talk to the fine people about what's on your mind and what they need to focus on going into this week and beyond, good sir. Focus on your damn self, all right? Making yourself a better human being, making yourself a better person, taking care of your family, all right? Taking care of you, all right? Stop worrying about what the government is doing because you can't control that shit, all right? Stop worrying about the price of gas because you can't control that shit, all right? There's nothing you can do about it. Hell, there ain't nothing that the person we appointed to be the president of the United States can do about it, all right? So stop trying to blame him for this shit. Stop being mad. I mean, you, yeah, you, you, everybody got to be mad at somebody, right? So I guess he's the one that you got to be mad at. That's what you you got to be the guy, that, I guess. That's, that's what he's appointed the president to be, right? He's appointed the president to be the scapegoat. Yeah, point, point the finger at this guy, right? But other than that, man, you know what I'm saying? I say it all the time, bro. You know what I'm saying? We need us, like, treat the person besides you the way that you would want to be treated, right? And then that, that'll make for a better world. You know what I'm saying? Uh, act of kindness, whether it be big or small, is still an act of kindness, and it is to be appreciated, all right? So uh, if you look at the just the human makeup of the face right it takes way less muscles to smile than just to frown right so be kind to your fellow man woman all right uh it, it'll go a long way but at the same time man we appreciate you guys episode 227 all right you can follow us on all social media, pl- social media platforms of course at jb and benny blue uh of course we have youtube we have the twitter you know what i'm saying we have instagram and we got the tiktok too you know what i'm saying of course you know what i'm saying our tiktok is cracking courtesy of our guy benny of course is at jb and benny blue like all of our social media we appreciate you guys tap in mess with us on our, our our own individual Instagram pages, mine is seven three king jb seven three, and Benny's of course at Benny Blue Eyes. Hit us up, man. Let us know what you got going on. Of course, you know, say you check us out in the desert, right, where I reside, on CasualSports.com. All right, we live stream. You know, what I'm saying radio right here in the desert in Phoenix, the greater Phoenix area. You still want to listen to our silky smooth voices? You know, what I'm saying you want that content to hear it, to mellow, to to, to just relish in it. One hot dollar is all we need, bro. That's it. One dollar. Patreon.com slash JB and Benny Blue. All right. Tap in. One dollar. That's all Please. it is. One Please do. dollar. All right. You know what I'm saying? You want to check us out? Uh, you got inquiries. You know what I'm saying? Questions, comments, concerns. You know what I'm saying? You got new music. You know what I'm saying? We're still checking for the new music, man. Come with it. Come with it. Come with it. All right. Uh, you want to be a guest? You think you want to be a guest on our show, man? Tap in. You know, Send no us. Idea. A message, right? Send us a message. JB and Billy Review at gmail.com. Billy checks it periodically, regularly, I should say. All right, and we'll get you right, especially the music. We want cast to yeah. come with the new music, man. Well, I know y'all making it. Shoot it to us. We'll critique it right here on our show live oh, yes, stream. Man. You know what I'm saying? You better believe it, right? Yep. We're going to give you the God's honest truth from our heart with love, right? Not out of no malicious soul, you know, hating type shit. All right. Without a doubt, man. You know what I'm saying? Again, man, tap in with them boys, Zach and Cody, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the sweet life of Zach and Cody. You know what I'm saying? Of course, Valley Boys Association Clothing. I go to valleyboysassociation.com. Use code PODCAST, all caps 22, to get 20% off your entire order. 
right? They got some dope shit, man. Some shit I'm sure you'll like. All right, go check them out. Of course, Vinny talked about it. It's coming. It's on the way. Look out for the bro at JB and Benny Blue. Look way. out for all the, promo, the promo code to use. It's Don't on miss the way. Out. We Listen. got a special. We're going to be blasting it too. You know what I'm saying? So yes. we're blasting on our Instagram. Yes. JB and Benny Blue. We're going, to, we're going to blast it on my Instagram. Of course, you have a lot of followers from here, from the Valley out here. My Twitter, of course, you know, the Valley is real hot on my Twitter. So we're going to blast it, man. You know what I'm saying? We're going to make sure that you guys get a hold to it. Hoodies, hats, shirts, all that shit. Bird gang all day. Yes. Beautiful. True goddamn promo. And that's it, reviewers. It's been episode 227. We will see you here in a couple weeks, and then we are back on every week because you know what time it is. Foosball season. Yeah, no place like home. Mm-mm-mm. Hey, I'm about, to, I'm about to go watch a 227 on, on like, <laughs> on like, 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 uh, like on Prime or some shit. You know what I'm saying? Right, yeah, you might, yeah, you might have to go yeah. to the archives for that one. But yeah. it's there. It's, 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 no, there. it's there. It's on Prime. It's on Prime right now. Yeah, I saw it the other day. It's on Prime. So I might catch me a couple of episodes before I pass out here. Y'all know me. It's damn near my bedtime. So Right. So there it is. With that in mind, with that in mind, we ain't going to hold you along. Reviewers, we love you. Until we see you next time, we are out. Peace. Holla. Mm-hmm.